my name is Mike Serzan. I'm an oncology fellow at the Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center, and I'm delighted to join you as part of the Kidney Candid Initiative. Today, we'll be discussing cytokine therapy with a particular focus on bempeg aldosleucan, which is a modified IL-2 therapy. For some context, we know that high-dose IL-2 therapy has been associated with a clinically meaningful and durable benefit for up to 10% of patients with advanced kidney cancer. However, its widespread use has largely been limited due to excessive toxicities, which oftentimes requires inpatient management at specialized care facilities. Over the years, many approaches have tried to improve the therapeutic efficacy of IL-2 therapy while sparing some of its systemic toxicities. And what we've learned is that IL-2 not only activates the immune system by stimulating CDA-positive T cells and NK cells, um, but IL-2 can also be immunosuppressive by activating regulatory T cells within the tumor microenvironment. And so BEMPEG was designed as a modified IL-2 agonist that selectively targets the beta-gamma subunit of the IL-2 receptor on CDA-positive T cells and NK cells, while sparing the alpha-beta-gamma subunit of the IL-2 receptor that's expressed on regulatory T cells. And indeed, in early phase clinical trials, BEMPEG was found to selectively activate CDA-positive T cells while sparing its effect on regulatory T cells. This led to the PIVOT09 trial, which was a large, randomized, phase 3 clinical trial of over 600 patients with advanced kidney cancer. Patients received either BEMPEG plus nivolumab or investigator's choice of VEGF-TKI therapy with sunitinib or cabozantinib. Unfortunately, this study met neither of its primary endpoints with a failure to prolong over, to increase overall response rate or overall survival, leading to its premature discontinuation. Similarly, BEMPEG showed disappointing results in melanoma and bladder cancer, which ultimately led the, the company to discontinue its further clinical development. And I think one of the potential lessons we learned here is that this non-alpha binding IL-2 approach may lack specificity for actually exerting its effect within the tumor microenvironment. Some of the more modern approaches have been used uh, conjugating IL-2 with a ligand that, rec that recognizes a receptor on either an immune cell, such as pd one or a tumor cell, and thereby delivers IL-2 directly into the tumor microenvironment where it can exert its effect. We certainly look forward to the results of uh, these studies as a potential way forward for cytokine therapy and renal cell carcinoma.